or two minutes behind schedule. Hi everybody. It's the fingernail fixer with Melissa Finch, <laughs> BFF Mel. BFF Mel. And our special guest, Lauren Wireman. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Where are you joining us from, Lauren? Um, I am just outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma today. Nice. Rocking the RV live. Well, actually, we drove this time, so we're in my car, and we have, like, a thing on the back and a thing on the top, and it's just me and my daughter, because um, my husband, like, needed a break. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> like, please give me a break from these nail people. <laughs> He's like, I haven't seen our house for two months. Sleep in my own bed. <laughs> what? Home? What is that? <laughs> We're going to give people just a minute or two to join the Facebook Live before we start in with our discussion. And while we are waiting for people to come on, we would really appreciate it if you would click on share and share the Facebook Live video to your professional pages so that other nail professionals will see that we are chatting today and can join us. I'm going to refresh my page and go share it. I am going to share it too. Thing. Oh, you. <laughs> the more people we have, the more fun the conversation gets. Oh yes, we oh, like. I'm on my iPad. I'm like, hello. Yes, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Is, <laughs> Is it weird to see yourself in a little box? <laughs> <laughs> like, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can start doing this. <laughs> we, we captured Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <Yeah>. share. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that was better than my phone. We could see you better on my iPad. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, the phone you would have been like this big. <laughs> you would have had to hold it up real close like a makeup tutorial, put your hand behind it or something. There you go. That or we could have you just put like your eyes and nose across the top and we could use one of our mouths. <laughs> that would make it appear a little bigger. <laughs> okay, we might have too much fun with this. Yeah. Well, I don't know about too much fun. All right, I shared it to the fingernail fixer page. I'm going to share it to my personal page. Is everybody sharing the live? Yes. Perfect. I'm sharing it to my last page. We want Lauren to know she is our first special guest our first guest star yeah Yay! you guys will have to let us know in the comments yeah. what you think of having someone besides us to <laughs> chat with <laughs> so that we get kind of a third person in the dynamic as well as give you an additional opinion and some additional information we got more room here better yes all right perfect <laughs> want to bring her closer to me <laughs> we can nail on <laughs> That's right. I'm excited about this topic. I saw um, one of the ladies online was posting pictures from like a nail book that she got in a Yes, yes, that, that was, was so amazing. cool. That was so cool. I, I enjoyed reading that this morning. Yeah, we were loving those. Yes, thank you for all the people that input on there. And thank you for everybody that watched last month. That was great. Yeah, last yeah. month was a lot of fun. Wow, Lebanon. Hello from the U.S. to Lebanon. Yes, there we saw Arkansas. Nice. Um, what else do we have? Where's everyone from? Bonjour, is that Canada is that, or is that France? <laughs> right, one of the two. There's the Arkansas, I see it now. Yep. I'm going to cool. grab a chart report real quick. BRB. Okay, excellent. Michigan, Lauren says hi. Nice. <laughs> Geneva, we've got Geneva from Texas, There's wow, Texas. Denmark, Canada, sweet, Florida, Florida, Colorado, yay, South Dakota, this is Michigan, exciting. yeah, we've got several countries, lots of different states, this is so much fun, London, oh, hi, Sheila, Arkansas, <laughs> Nebraska, whoa, Nebraska's not far from us, <laughs> <laughs> wait, where's our Iowa peeps, do we have any of those yet? Uh, I haven't seen one yet. There we go. Carolina. 
Oh, Christy, big hugs to you and your mom. LA. I hope we can cheer her up. Here's another <laughs> London. Yeah, at least your mom should get a good laugh out of us, right? Maryland, North Carolina, Florida. Hey, one of my coworkers. Wow, lots of at cool the places. Oh, then an Iowa person finally. Yes, Karina's on here. Excellent. Hey, Karina. <laughs> Oregon. Sweet. Wow, those are some awesome locations. Yes, we're all. Kind of makes me want to travel. All across the country. East no coast, kidding. west coast, south, north. Speaking of travel. You and I are actually going to do our first official hashtag nail on road trip with the Fingernail Fixer and BFF Mel to Atlanta. In August. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to rock the hot Atlanta totally. How many of you are going to the Foot Forward Summit? <laughs> we would love to see a show of hands or a I will see you in Atlanta because we are actually going to be talking to different people at the event. Wow, Newfoundland, cool. Squirrel. <laughs> and yes. while we're in Atlanta, we're also beginning to doing some, going to be doing some live broadcasting from the Foot Forward Summit for those of you that can't make it. Because I kind of wouldn't expect someone to pop over from Newfoundland no, or, no. you know, Well, London. the second Monday in August that we typically do our Facebook Lives from will be in Atlanta. So that's where we'll do our posts from that month. Yes, we'll still do our live. And speaking of, our schedule of Facebook Lives actually ended today. Our, our original schedule. Yes. And some exciting news for you. Keep an eye out on the Fingernail Fixer blog later this week with Nails Magazine because I'm going to be posting our... Facebook live dates for the rest of the year because we're going to keep coming I finally to you. committed to the rest yes! of the year. <laughs> we brought her to the dark side of social media. <laughs> the, would you call social media a little bit of a dark side, Lauren? Uh, right? It's like it's a like job a, into it's itself. Like a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Black hole. That's what I was just going to say. It's a black hole. Yes. Once you're in, you don't get out. Exactly. Hotel California, you can check in, but you can never leave. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, cool. Christy's going to join us in Atlanta. Vonda's going to join us in Atlanta. Hi, Lynn. Cool. Who else is joining us in Atlanta? Barbara's working on it. Sweet. We can't wait to see you, and if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, if you visit footforwardsummit.com, <laughs> that is the website with the information. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> and I'm actually going to, this time I got really smart, because it seems like I always tell you, oh, I'll get that link for you later. And this time I went ahead and put some links in a Word document, so that when we talked about it, I could post it right into the chat right now. And so I'm posting the Foot Forward Summit link for you in the chat. Boom. Done. And Chile and Puerto Rico. Whoa. Sweet. Yes. Got some You guys rock. Really, yeah. <laughs> thank you for being so cool and tuning in with us from all over the place. And since we're talking about <laughs> the Foot Forward Summit and Atlanta, let's mention that we're going to have a bonus broadcast of Facebook Live just talking about the Foot Forward Summit. Yes. We're going to let you know who the guest artists are, give you a little bit of information about the classes and what they're going to cover. So if you have any questions, definitely leave them for us in the comments so we can do some research for you on the event for things that you can't find on the website. We'll be doing that on July 2nd at our usual Facebook Live time. So whatever time it is for you right now in your part of the world, this is the time that we'll be doing that broadcast on July 2nd. And we'll talk about anything and everything Foot Forward Summit. You'll notice on the blog that I've already posted some things to do. In the coming week, this week I believe, I'll also be posting some restaurants. And before Atlanta, you'll also get a post. I'll do something about where you could fly in early and get a pedicure before the Foot Forward Summit. Because how amazing <laughs> would it be to have a pedicure... And go to the Foot Forward Summit with awesome toes you didn't have to do yourself. We've Yay. already scheduled pedicures with Rosanna, actually. Nice. And then we're getting manicures with Kim Jones. So we've got two separate salon visits, and we'll definitely bring you photos and conversations from those services. It's been forever since we've... Have we ever gotten a service together? Like more than 10 years ago probably yeah it's been a really yes. long time I'm super stoked because it's so much fun to get 
a pedicure with a friend. So if you know nail friends that are coming in, definitely connect and see about scheduling services together. Also, something that really helps save money is to bunk with someone. So if you have a nail professional that you're friends on Facebook with, but maybe you're each coming to the event by yourself, splitting a room with two beds is a way easy way to save money. And that's actually how our friendship really cemented, was yes. traveling to an event <laughs> and sharing a room. So you may find the other half of your nail soul. Who knows? Yeah, she's never gotten rid of me since in 17 years? Exactly. Something like that, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, so on to today's topic. Yes. Nail art. About? History of nail art. So last month we covered the history of nail care. And I will say for as much information as I found and provided, that was still not everything. And if you have since found something that didn't quite coincide dates or places, again, I just went with the source information that I had. Um, a lot of stuff that I had for last month, um, I found again reflected in what I found for this month. So I'm trying to to stay away and stay just a little bit mm -hmm. different. Make sure um, we're not duplicating information. Yes, we so don't want to bore you to death. Yes. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of nail art. I'm going to take us up to about the 1980s, and then um, Lauren and Holly will be interjecting their their takes and input on <laughs> on a few things. And we definitely want to get some commentary and interjection Please. from you. So be sure and have your keyboards ready to go or your thumbs ready to type if you're doing a digital keyboard and yes. join the conversation. Yes, we will be watching for input uh, questions. And last month we had so much fun with people interacting with us. We actually went for like a whole hour because we were having so much fun. Yes, and now we're kind of addicted to it. So we yes. fully expect you to participate. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read from my notes. Um, so hang with me here a little bit. As stated last month, there was, nail art history can go back as far as 3,000 years ago or 3,000 BC in ancient Rome, China, Greece, and Egypt. Um, some new information I found this time I thought was kind of interesting. In Greek mythology, and this is one of the things I really like Greek mythology. It's so fascinating. It is. Um, the Greek god Euros, who was the god of attraction, he was the son of Aphrodite. The Roman counterpart would be Cupid is identified as the first manicurist. He cut off Aphrodite's fingernails. I don't know why. I didn't find <laughs> that information out. Cut them off while she was sleeping and scattered them on the beaches of Earth. Seeing what had transpired, the fates collected the clippings and turned them into the semi-precious stone onyx that is Greek for fingernail or ani. Onyx was already one of my favorites because, hello, it's black. Right. It not be stunning, shiny black. And knowing that is where that came from in the Greek mythology it just makes it like even that much more special. Exactly. I thought that was pretty cool. And my little Instagram story friend Asheron, his name has a basis in Greek mythology. Yes. Dark Hunter history. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nail on. Nail on. <laughs> so um, one of my sources I found this time for my information, I wasn't finding a lot of the details that I I like details. I like names. I like dates. I like specifics as my analytical side of my brain. Wasn't finding exactly what I wanted online. And then I remembered I had this book that CND gave um, all the educators three years ago at a training. Is this one. And I just posted the link to the book on Amazon <laughs> in the chat. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're so getting better at this. Yes. So this is Nails, the story of the modern manicure. As you can see, I've got all kinds of tabs here on the side for different years for all the information that I found. One of the things I thought was interesting, and this is in one of the teaser pics that Holly and I both shared, and Lauren, thank you, yeah, shared for, sharing. for us this morning, was pendant jewels is what they call them. And they were charms that hung off the nail. Um, so the charms that came back, actually came back in the 80s, weren't new in the 80s. Imagine that, something that wasn't new, but claims this is true. Right. So by a show of little thumbs up, who has worn a nail piercing or something dangly <laughs> off their nails? Thumbs up. Give it to us. Have you worn dangly things, yep. Lauren? Yep. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Look at all those thumbs up. <laughs> nice. I love it. 
Like, that was one of the things I always would have you do for me when we first met, too. I would come to you because I trusted you to pierce my nail and not, like, This tiny messy. little hand drill that yes, she had and to she use. she would, like, chur, chur, yep. chur. And I would be, like, so proud of it, just, like, rocking out this cool Careful, don't thing. put this one in my hair. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, 1925. So, the Lee press-on nails that became popular in the 80s were not first ones. There were ones way earlier than that in the even in the, the 50s and the 30s, but in 1925, there was a company called Osprey, which is a British company, and they made a set of t gold press-on nails. You know, and they're now in, um, in like the British Museum or something, so. Can you even imagine? And they, they sold for quite a bit. I would think so, like celebrity, I would guess. I would, yes. That or royalty, if it's in Britain. In, in 1958, a woman in Ohio, had a laminated pattern textile nail cover, how it was described, this is what's in the book too, which are similar to today's appliques. So they looked a lot like the, the Minx coverings, the Chambery, uh, Chambery, Jamberries. Yeah, the yep. Jamberries. So somebody came up with those in 1958. That's hard to imagine. Right? That like they were even thinking of that back then. I pierced my nails with safety pins. Nice! That is like <laughs> nail tech, MacGyvering at and, its finest. And grunge. Right? When my daughter was in high school, she went through a phase of decorating all her clothing with safety pins. Oh, brilliant. So in 1960s, really, really bright colors came to be popular. Before that, it was soft pinks. Red has never, ever gone out of style. But the bright colors, things that we would, the colors we would now associate with like the 80s. Um, that's when some designs started coming into play, um, the Out There Talons, and it was by a company called Fabergé that made these, these polishes that were bright. So putting lines on it, geometric patterns, dots, that was in the 60s. Um, in 1976, I know we're kind of going through some of these kind of quick because we have a lot of other information to cover. In 1976, Bicentennial Nails, nails decorated with the flags, were actually newsworthy. Apparently that wasn't much of a thing yet. Um, 1973, the rock star Lou Reed, who lives, if any of you know who Lou Reed, he's always been a little bit out there. He was one of the first ones to start wearing black nails. Nice. And I just need like to interject this because nail polish on guys for me is like, oh. so I need to know if there are other girls out there that think it is excessively manly when guys wear nail polish. Yes. Some of my go-to favorite. Oh, there's a heart. Someone else loves it. Woohoo! It's not just me. I think it's fabulous when they wear colors that are complementary to their skin tone or complementary to the style of jewelry. Um, I did the nails for the photographer, one of the cover sessions that I did, and he had this beautiful artwork on his arms. And so we went with asphalt, which is like a concrete gray. And it just was so attractive to compliment that. So I think it's like very manly when guys are like, yeah, I'm man enough to wear some polish. That's just friggin' awesome. Whew. <laughs> I need a drink after that. Okay, Holly needs a minute. So <laughs> 1980, the magazine, this was the first one I could find, and this may not be so exactly all the information, but this is one of the first information I found. 1980, a magazine called Mainly Manicuring came about. 1983, Nails Magazine. Ooh, ow, ow. 1985, Nail Pro Magazine. And an article... Shout out to Deborah. That's right. Hey. In 1988, Nails Magazine was reflecting off of five years of being published... They reported that there was a broadening niche of nail art that was not limited to, and this is quite a list. Was, yeah, wait, pause, pause, take a deep breath. This is a huge list. Yes. So it gives you an idea what's already come about in yes. just the 80s. Yes, or and prior, yeah, 70s, 80s, but what was really becoming broadening. Nail polish, striping tape, striping brushes, rhinestones, pearls, semi-precious stones, Gold nuggets, which I took gold nuggets to be like our gold leafing. Okay. Now that's kind of the way I interpreted that and other stuff I've read. I don't know. It could be like Swarovski crystal pixies and literally like little tiny nuggets. That's not what I interpreted, but that is very well. Someone that was doing nails in the 80s, let us know in the comments. Where gold nuggets come from, yes. yes. Um, gold and diamond charms, decals, lace, 
hand painting, freehand and stenciled airbrushing, gel art, marbling, snake skins, feathers, seashells, cameos, and cameos are those little pictures mm -hmm. of, of like psych profile faces, three dimensional art, and three dimensional molds. That was a lot. So by nine, by 88, those were all starting to be either re-emerging and, and broadening the nail art spectrum. And the best we could tell from research, because nail art history is really difficult to research it when was. you want to get specific. Yes. It's not quite as well documented as the history of nails, just general nails. And the best we can tell, a lot of trends were born in the 70s. So it seems like airbrushing yes. came about for nails in the 70s. Um, it seems like transfer foil using crystals, those types of things came about in the 70s. What were you doing in the 70s, Mo? Uh, grade school. Nice. What were you doing in the 70s, Lauren? I was not yet in bodily form. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 75, so I wasn't quite aware that I was in love with nails just yet. Just yet. And we'd love to know, what were you guys doing in the 70s? Was anyone doing nails? And what trends were the first ones in art that you started to do? Definitely leave some comments for us down below so we can see what you were doing in the 70s. Yes, yeah, see, as I kind of thought, gold nuggets was gold foil that was crinkled up and not flat. Oh, That's cool. kind of what I was thinking. It wasn't, just, wasn't a, like foil as we think of it. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying that, Susie. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and Jennifer as well. Thanks, Jennifer. Yes, thank you, ladies. And yes, history repeating itself. Uh, fashions have a tendency to go on these 20-year, 20, 20 to 30-year yes. cycles. Yes. Lord knows I am not going to wear my jeans tight rolled again, though. No. Like, I can remember having... Did you do that? Like you would get the impressions in your ankles from tight rolling your jeans so tight. And then you like wore two or three pairs of socks so that they had an ombre effect down to your <laughs> shoes. Did anyone else do that? Or am I crazy? I, I can't say guilty of tight rolling. I don't know about All multiple right. pairs of socks. Yes. Totally rocked out three pairs because my mom would be like, it's a good thing you do the laundry. I'm like, boom. <laughs> um, I'm never going to go back to bell bottoms from the 70s. Oh my gosh, I saw some of those at a show this year. Because they was... made a, the flare came back in like the 90s. Yes, yes. They were gigantic bell bottoms. Where did I see? I want to say I saw it in Long Beach this year. And I was like, oh wow, all she needed was some <laughs> platform shoes, man. Yes, scrunch the socks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Scrunch the socks. Um, okay, 1984. Olympian Florence Griffith Joyner, better known or known as Flojo, was a track star. She received she was this is one of our teaser photos too. She's wearing like four gold medals, I think, and a silver. And she's got her nails out. Um, she received almost as much attention for her two inch long nails that are decorated with red, white, and blue as she did for her track performances. She went back to the Olympics again in eighty eight and again made more news for her very long nails. And I found this kind of this blurb in, in my book that I thought was kind of funny. In 1990, Essence Magazine reported that gone are the days of long Dragon Lady nails, decals, 14 karat gold tips, rhinestone, and sculptured nails with painted scenery. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that prediction, Lauren? <laughs> but that was their prediction. And what year was that predicted? 1990. Yeah. Good thing that we didn't know what we were talk they were talking about in the nope. 90s, right? No, nope. for 2000s when we <laughs> yes. all came back around. Okay, so so the origins of, the best we could find, foils were used in the 70s. Airbrushing used in the 70s. Crystals used in the 70s. 3D acrylic and gel, from the best I could tell, um, maybe started somewhere in Japan, somewhere in there. Um... The one thing I did find that I could narrow down for sure was stamping. Stamping that we do now was actually started for the DIYers, the do-it-yourselfers. I can remember going to the mall and being able to purchase a kit from Conad Company. Conad was a company in Korea and they started in 2002. Now a comment on stamping 
is a few years ago, people that shall not be named thought stamping was cheating. I, I remember. Can't imagine who that I, was I, 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 I don't know who that possibly could have been. No clue. When I went to a boot camp to become an educator for CND in 2013, Jen Arnold had stamping on her nails, and I remember sending pictures to somebody that shall not be named, and she's like, yeah, but that's cheating. <laughs> just, just saying. Speaking of cheating, <laughs> <laughs> if you need some tips and tricks for your stamping, <laughs> there is, I've been getting so many video requests, and... Um, a few people came up to me at Premier Orlando and said, you know, we really miss your tutorial videos. And I came to realize as I was scrolling through my YouTube, I've really gotten away from the tutorial videos. Just everything's so busy and not having a good space. And so I purchased a fold-up nail table. Um, right? And I'm going to get a little organizer thing for my house. And I'm working on a polish rack and all of that fun stuff. And I'm going to bring to you, starting tomorrow, Tutorial Tuesdays. So you will find a new video tutorial in my super fun, overly detailed, long drawn out style. <laughs> so these will not be 30 second videos. And I'll give you a new video every Tuesday on my YouTube. So if you want to go to Fingernail Fixer on YouTube and subscribe, it will let you know as soon as the video goes live. And I'm going to help her incorporate a nail corner Hopefully from some pointers I have in my nail room, yes. my studio. Because this literally is a nail corner. Yes. And before we keep going, because you're at the point we're switching over to that, yes. Before we do that, let's look at where some of these guys were in the 70s and what they were getting up to. So let me scroll back because it automatically moved itself forward. We covered the, gel nug the gold nugget yes. thing. We figured that out. Um, Jenny says pretty much everything has been done already. I feel yep. like that's fairly true. There have been some new things and hence our guest artists to kind of touch base with some of those new things that were, came about that we haven't seen yet. Here we've got somebody born in 79. Here we've got one that's been in nail tech since 89. Born in 78, doing nails since she was 12. Wow. All right. Oh, cool. Eileen used to paint ceramic ornaments, which gave her brush skills, brush skills before she did nails. And I find a lot of nail people have an artistry background somewhere. Like maybe before we leave, if I have a second, I'll show you some of Mel's paintings <laughs> that she does on the side. Uh, Rose says, we didn't have social media, so we made stuff up as we went and got inspiration through our environment. High five Rose for using your nail eyes before it was possible to just pop on and find tutorial videos and Pinterest how-tos. That's really cool. Uh, she says it's kind of intimidating now. It is a lot more intimidating now because you know what's out there. You know the different variety and skills. Um, you've got people like Lauren Wireman that post things and um, or Winnie will post things and your clients will bring it in and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you think I've got those skills. I'm flattered, but not, not right. happening. So. And I'm over here like... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that our evil cackles, like, coordinate together. That's fantastic. Like, Teresa, she says she's 60, and she's been doing her nails since she was 10. Oh, wow, that's cool. Here we've got someone that used to make toothpick. Who else used toothpicks to make flowers when they were little? I did that too. <laughs> did anyone else polish their nails with uh, whiteout and color them with Sharpies? High school. Totally. <laughs> and then I also figured out in, you know those desks that you sit at in elementary and it's got that metal? I would put glue in the little tray and let it dry up. And then I would put a little bit of glue on my nail and glue the dried glue to my nail to make little oh extensions <laughs> and then design them with Sharpies. Like that was so much fun. Okay. So Michelle says, right? Lauren's too young to remember. <laughs> Just a young in there, Lauren. Yes. Uh, Vonda got in trouble for getting to her mom's nail polish. I saw that. Nice. <laughs> We've got 70s for hippie time in Wisconsin. Um, Rose, a trick for 
Rose says expect expectations are high to copy an artist. What I do if I feel like I can't duplicate the look precisely to what my client is looking for is offer them an alternative. So let's say Mel brings in her Pinterest or her Instagram and she's like, here, this is what I want to do on my nails. I'm going to go, oh my gosh, that is so cool. What is your favorite <laughs> thing about this? Yes. And usually there's going to be some specific things that drew her eye. And then I'll say, well, what if we take your favorite elements like the color or the style of the design and we incorporate those into something custom for you and then you'll have your own Pinterest worthy design. I have a client that brings in, she's been coming to me for oh, four or five years now and she brings in a Pinterest picture almost every appointment and she, we have this good uh, agreement by now. She knows that I'm not going to be able to duplicate that nor do I want to duplicate the design exactly. Well, she's like, well, I kind of liked this color. I like this design. And then I will put my own twist on it. And I love that her reaction almost 100% of the time is, well, I like this better than the picture. And I'm yes. like, yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then post their nails on mm. social media so that you see you're proud of their custom work. Yes. And it makes them more excited about having your work be <laughs> custom than copy someone else's exactly. Exactly. We've got someone here that wore gold nail jewelry in her long stripper nails. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good job, Jennifer. Uh, nail art will never die. Agreed. Here's Rose bought a Lee sculpting kit in the 70s. Nice. We've got one favorite, Flojo, and her favorite aunt are why she started in nails. Uh, nail art forever. The 90s was French pink and whites. She got bored. Scrunch socks and leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> Total 80s. Yay, Michelle said stamping rocks. Stamping definitely is, like, my initial view of it was totally that it was cheating, especially when you would see a nail art competition and someone has submitted nails and it's a stamped design. So I feel like stamping brings detailed artistry to the salon nails in a time frame that's affordable for the client. So I've definitely moved past the feeling that it's cheating well, into the feeling that it is time sensitive artistry. And I think I like saying how it started off for the DIYers and then nail professionals got a hold of it and we took it to an entirely different level because then we started stamping with gels mm -hmm. and working with shellac and being able to adhere glitter and foils and pigments to the stamped design that's something a DIYer cannot do mm -hmm. on their own. So we just took it to a different level. Mm -hmm. And crazily enough, some of the Tutorial Tuesday videos have stamping. Hmm. <laughs> All right, a couple other things before we really incorporate Miss uh, the lovely Lauren here with us. Um, Minx nails, which are, you know, like an applique, mm -hmm. they were one of the first places you could get the chrome look um, but they were like a sticker you could put on. Those were in 2007. The very first place I saw those was on Samantha Sweet's toes. She yes. came over to the yes. U.S. for one of our um, trainings, and she had these toes that were like little silver mirrors. They were so cool, and she's like, it's speaks. And we're like, <laughs> it's what? It's what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> so she's always been a fashion-forward trendsetter yes. for me online and Salon Geek. So... Chrome that we know it now, it took several years to get that from the 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 Minx stickers, decals, uh, appliques. What do they actually term their product? Do you know how they call it exactly, Lauren? Um, the Minx product? Yeah. What is their descriptor of it? I forget what their official here. I'll Google it. Okay. So if you, prior to... The chrome that we use now in a, in a powder form, that was the only way to really get the chrome look or to have press-ons. Um, but the, the first workable, safe, cosmetic-grade chrome powder was introduced to us by none other than uh, Lauren Weyerman from Wildflowers. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> nice. Party in the iPad. <laughs> Party right. in the iPad. Um, <laughs> I, remember, I remember spring of 2016, myself paying really close attention to social media. So there seemed to be this race 
between um, a few different companies trying to come up with the safe, workable cosmetic grade. Because prior to that, we'd heard stories about women using like automotive powders that weren't safe. And then Lauren entered the picture. Do you want to give us your take, Lauren? Oh, goodness. Sure. Um, basically, what happened was, well, there's a lot to, there's a lot to chrome powder. Um, what you were saying about automotive paints and pigments, um, if you chase back and chase back and chase back um, the sources of these pigments and products, um, the same manufacturing facility can have a section for doing automotive pigments and paints and for doing cosmetic pigments and paints because pigments are essentially raw materials. So somebody mines for the raw materials. The raw materials then end up at a facility. And like I said, it can be a facility where the company does both metallic uh, metallics for automobile paints and metallics for cosmetics, um, which is very interesting. It kind of splits off into either direction. Um, when a pigment is for cosmetic use, it's treated very differently. It is a much different um, purity. Uh, and that's what makes pigments so expensive is the purity and the quality of the raw material of them. So what they're using for car paint is definitely far inferior um, in most cases than what we would use for like a cosmetic grade pigment. So we as a company have released a product called the Powdered Sugar Collection. Mm -hmm. And in the Powdered Sugar Collection, we had four cosmetic grade um, pigment powders that were, um, they're like shimmery kind of powders, sort of like the CND additives. Um, we released that product in June of, or maybe even May of 2016. And do you have it? Are you busting it out? I am. Um, I'm busting it out. <laughs> so, there's the powdered sugars. Now, the big highlight of the powdered sugars when we launched them was the glitters in there. Um, because they're glitters that are like, they're white, but they all have a different sheen and they turn different colors when you put them over dark stuff. We picked pigments that did the same thing, but it was just like, oh, they're just pretty pigments. So fast forward, um, maybe about a month and, um, the, the chrome powder was something that it already existed. It had been in existence for years and these manufacturers had chrome powder. Um, we just, I think none of us realized that I had it. I had it. I had it for probably like a year and a half, um, just sitting on my shelf. Um, I think none of us just realized what you could do with it. And so um, when we realized what could be done with it, um, then, and the, the sample that I had was from a cosmetic company that made pigments for cosmetics. So that part was super easy for me. Um, I just had to hurry up, get it, get it in the jars, which was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, that stuff, the way that it floats, I'm it's sure like, those of you who have it know. Oh yes. Yes. Um, you're wearing it by the time you're done doing a service. <laughs> um, it just was everywhere. So uh, dealing with that was crazy. And then a month after that, I, I woke up one morning and I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if the powdered sugars do the same thing. And so I ran into work, talked to them, and it was amazing because they did the same thing. So I went live immediately and I was like, guess what, you guys? Colored chrome. Woohoo! You know, lost their minds. So it was, um, it was an interesting process and um you know when it was happening it was just it was unbelievable and it's fun to reminisce you know about that time because I just it was complete I was like getting two or three hours of sleep at night for, <laughs> you know and, and I'm somebody who likes to sleep for a full eight hours so yes. it was crazy but that was what really started our company and got it um really off the ground we were established then but bringing that to the United States and being the first company in the United States to do so um, was just crazy it was awesome sweet 
Well, we definitely appreciate you rocking our worlds with Chrome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now this kind of brings us forward to, we're up to social media. I did want to make a couple comments here. On the book that I'm quoting from, The Story of the Modern Manicure, that was published in 2014, I found a couple of blurbs that I thought was interesting. Um, in 2012, now granted that's a few years ago, but 2012, the U.S. had more specialized licensed nail techs than the population of the Bahamas. Who loves the Bahamas? Right? Well, 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 I'd love to go there someday. It's beautiful. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> And in 2012, Americans spent $7.7 billion, yes, that's billion with a B, on professional nail treatments. And in comparison, they only spent, or Americans only spent $7 billion on engagement rings. Wow. So, so more people love their nails than other people. Right? Well, yeah. You know. Sometimes I like my nails more than people. Priorities. Exactly. So now we're going we're gonna to switch off to social media. I was going to throw in a few things here on the social media platforms that we're all used to. I don't know if you know when all of them got started. So I'm going to throw out some dates and then I'm going to throw most of this over to the BFF. How many of you remember MySpace? Who remembers MySpace? I Show remember MySpace. Show us some thumbs up. Yes, it was, it was your... Did you have music on your page? Lauren, did you put music oh. on your MySpace page? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. I only had MySpace for a short time and then I got rid of it because it just annoyed me. I saw a meme the other day that said, Facebook needs um, an app or some way that when somebody pulls up your page, it'll play music. And a comment below that said, we have finally reached the age where people don't remember MySpace. <laughs> no, I MySpace loved having a theme customize. song. Yes, like, yes. I think MySpace was cool. I wish we could customize our Facebook pages like that. Yes, I, I yes. Like that. I totally loved having a theme song. And I remember posting nail stuff on my MySpace. So MySpace was started in 2003, and it died, may I rest in peace, in 2010. Um, Facebook started, and the rest of these are all going. Facebook started in 2004. Instagram was 2010. YouTube was 2005, which totally changed our nails world. Yes. Twitter, 2006. Tumblr, 2007. Pinterest started its beta testing in 2010. By the way, the people that started Pinterest, Des Moines, Iowa. Really? Yes. See, I ones aren't all that bad. No, we're not too bad. And Snapchat in 2011. So, social media has really, really changed the game for nail arts. Now, I remember when I started doing nails in 2001, I wanted to learn nail art so badly. And I would tell people this. It would give me almost anxiety because I wanted to know stuff so badly and just couldn't find the information that I wanted. Or you were limited to those gold nuggets. Or, um, I remember at the time, new bar pens. Remember the new bar pens? Yes, I love the yes. new bar pens. She, I still have some so that she, are, like, a little bit dried out. Yes. But I can't part with them. They were my friend. Right? I, so I still have a door full also. But what's interesting is the people like us and the people like you guys out there that wanted to know so much more about nail art, we had to find different avenues to get that information. And once you started finding it, you started sharing it. Mm -hmm. And... It just became this thing of social media helping nail art just absolutely explode. Um, I searched the other day from YouTube. I could not find a specific, what was the first nail art tutorial on YouTube? Could not find a, a specific. Um, what I did find was the most viewed nail art tutorial had 33 million views. And it was um, a trend for nails, um, nail art for 2017. So it was just recent yeah just last year nice so when people like holly started making your youtube videos and not she's not the only one she's just the one i'm obviously most familiar with that's what really started changing our face of of nail art and made it so much more accessible i know lauren has said that she learned a lot of her nail art techniques from watching nail art tutorials and watching them on mute because quite frequently they were in other um, other languages right yeah I think um, one of the first or the earliest YouTubers that was doing art was Robin Moses. Yes. And yes. all of her stuff is just hand painted on the surface of the nails. And she was somebody that I watched periodically. But to learn, um, you know, encapsulating with acrylic, uh, stuff like that, that was more advanced techniques. Yeah, it was Russians. It was um, people who spoke Spanish.
wish I couldn't understand the stuff anyway. So I just turned the volume off and had to be as observant as I possibly could, you know, to try to learn those things. But it is totally different now. I mean, it's <laughs> oversaturated. Like, nail art for days. <laughs> yeah, definitely post in the comments some of your favorite nail professionals to watch on YouTube. Robin Moses would be a good one. Oh, yes. Lauren, you do Facebook Live broadcasts with tutorials, don't you? I do a weekly tutorial every single Thurs Thursday, Thursdays, yes. which I'm like, yay, you're joining the club. Not, I mean, I think you were part of the club, and then you left, but now you're back. <laughs> but, uh, I think when I make my uh, Thursday nail art tutorial, I think of Winnie, um, because I know she's doing the same thing. And yes, I'll think of you Winnie too, Wednesday. And all three of us. <laughs> Right? We'll have Please Tutorial Israel. Tuesday, Winnie Wednesday, and yeah. Lauren Thursday. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, every Thursday, so. so there's no excuse for you guys not to be inspired because part of your week is going to be full of tutorials. And definitely leave us links for some of your favorite YouTubers so that everyone can just click on them and go find their YouTube channels. Cool. Nice. All right, so turning it over to you and your experiences with social media. Whew. <laughs> All right. So initially for me, the first thing that I found online as a nail professional looking for help was beauty tech. And that was started by Debbie Dorlam in 1994. Uh, I came about into the nail world in 1999. And that was a place where you could ask questions and get help and later became more, there would be tutorials and step-by-steps and so on as more of the social media came into play. And then for the UK side of things, you also had Nail Geek. And I can't remember what it was before Nail Geek, um, but he's always had the little beanie hat geek guy. And so just love that. Then as we advance a little further forward, getting into more social media versus forums, you have the Nails Magazine Nail Art Gallery. This was gone about this went about in February of 2010 and I was actually one of the beta testers for the nail art gallery and their idea behind that was to be an interactive community of nail photography and what I find interesting is that Pinterest started beta testing in March of 2010 so nails magazine was right there at that forefront of featuring photos and designs versus lots of words and forums. Um, Nails Magazine also has an app for the Nails Art Gallery. Mm -hmm. Just checking that out. Can you night. pull that up in the app store so that we can kind of show the little photo and descriptor so that they can find it if they don't have it? I will see what I can find. Then in October of 2010, Instagram comes to the table. And definitely Instagram and Pinterest have been two of the largest sources for nail designs. If you guys are interested, please leave your, put a little IG with your at symbol and then a little write Pinterest and your Pinterest name so that other nail professionals in the conversation can click on you in the comments or copy your Instagram handle and find you because it's important that we follow each other for support as well as to share ideas. I love to pop on to my Instagram and someone has said, wow, great job on the nails when it was a set of nails that I feel like, ugh, <laughs> that design did not turn out how I wanted. And it's just really nice as a community to help boost each other. I love going on and saying, wow, what a beautiful color choice for the skin tone or your lines look amazing or just anything that we can do to help boost each other. Ah, perfect. Let's see if we can... <laughs> is that close? I can't tell since we have a little tiny delay. Yeah, there's a bit of a delay. <laughs> closer, closer. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. If not, we can post a screenshot in the conversation. I can do can that. Can you do that? Yep, Perfect. I can do that. BFF Mel's going to post a screenshot in the conversation while we keep chatting about social media. In 2012, Nailgasm actually posted a video that it's kind of a montage to nail art, don't you yes, think? Yes, they call it a docu documentary, but it was really just talking about how, how empowering and how powerful and how inspiring nail art can be um, for women. And I'm popping on to stick the link to the Nailgasm video on Amazon. Perfect. 
just stuck it in the comments so you guys have that. In 2012, CNN, which is a news source that a lot of people look to and trust and feel like they know what they're talking about, CNN said that nail art is the new lipstick. I can remember when that was like a really big deal when that article came out. Do you remember that, Lauren? I don't, but I remember 2012 and how <laughs> nail art. Like, that was it. I had two clients that didn't get nail art. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe two of my clients will occasionally be in the mood for solid color. But for the most part, I would say 95, 90, 95% of my clientele wears design work as well. And what percentage do you think, like, give us a thumbs up if your clients are wearing nail designs. It doesn't want to let me post a screenshot, so when this is done, I'll go back and post it as a comment. Perfect, perfect. In the Nails Magazine world, we started seeing professional bloggers. One of the original bloggers would have been Debbie Dorlam posting on the beauty tech page with information and sharing tips and tricks. And now beauty blogging is its own huge thing. You're seeing the DIY blogs, you're seeing professional blogs, and it's anywhere from someone that just swatches nail polish and commentates on the color to people that give you ideas on design work and then you have bloggers that are um, kind of walking you through the process of starting a salon, walking you through being a nail. Nails Magazine has a student blog now. Um, some blogs to note from Nails Magazine, the 365 days of nail art is literally a photo of nail art every single day. So there's nothing to read, there, it do, it's not a time suck unless you haven't seen the pictures lately and keep going back <laughs> through them. But that's definitely a fun blog to follow and just pop on each day. So if you're having a brain block day, it can give you kind of some inspiration and a featured look. Um, there was the Healthy Tech Talk blog. Do you remember that? Yes, it was yes. a coordinated effort between C&D and Nails Magazine to help nail professionals be healthy. And that old Healthy Tech Talk blog is what inspired me to start posting a very occasional blog on how we could be a smidge healthier. Because I feel like expecting us to go from nail sloths that don't eat lunch and pig out at dinner and don't have time to exercise and sit at the table all day to like these workout fiends that eat super healthy every single meal with no exceptions is pretty unrealistic. Um, and so to make it a little easier to swallow to be healthier, my concept is to be kind of healthier this year than you were last year. Maybe if you never ever exercise, try five or ten minutes a day, maybe every other day. And this year I've actually finally built up to, I at least exercise every day. The time isn't consistent, but I at least squish it in somewhere every day. I need to work on that. that uh, that's the E word. Right. You know how right. you don't say the F word or whatever. That that's the E word. That doesn't really exist <laughs> in my my world. But I need to work on the E word. I'm not sure. I know many people busier than Lauren, especially right? now that she's touring the country. Do you find time to kind of be healthy? Um, I it's really actually very important for me um, to eat, uh, and I make time in my day to eat. I actually when I teach. Um, I have my daughter order my food for lunch at like 1130. She knows if it's 1130 that she needs to put it in order for my lunch so that it gets there at 12. Because just like when you're a nail tech, that lunch time, I mean, I've got people trying to talk to me, ask me questions. I can't go hide under a table or go sit in my car to get away from everybody in class. If I have a room at the hotel, I can. But I usually don't because I do enjoy talking to people. <laughs> um, but I will say this. Every single day, I get a workout of some kind. Um, we have probably 300 pounds of product in my car right now that I cannot leave out in the hot car. Mm -hmm. So uh, yesterday, I had to lug and lift every single one of those bins onto a cart mm -hmm. and push that cart all the way into the hotel. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and I can tell I'm breaking a sweat and a breathing. <laughs> That's 
awesome. Another blog of note from Nails Magazine that was early on was Maggie Rants and Raves. Maggie Franklin was a blogger that started in 2009, and I loved her snarky humor. Like, that was the first blogger that I personally read. And then the Fingernail Fixer blog, which is me, actually came about in 2011. So i am been around for a day or two, and it definitely has been something I truly enjoy. And she hasn't got me into the game until this, just this past December. Yes, um, I'm going to need to see a little show of hearts so that Mel knows who is happy that I drug her into social media kind because of. she leaves really cool tips and tricks on her Mel's Tips of the Trade page. I'm going to see some little, look, little thumbs up and hearts. <laughs> those, ha, are all, ha. those are all Lauren, I might now. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to ruin it like that? <laughs> Thank you for the love, Lauren. <laughs> Hashtag Mel hey, on Mel. Hashtag to explain things. So you are actually someone that I was watching when I was starting. Aw, that makes me want to hug the iPad. Aw, hugs. It's, awesome. it's been very inspiring to me to watch Holly over her career of having known her since just two years into her career and watch her build fingernail fixer into like this global name. We've been at, we were at a trade show together <laughs> one time and um, she had done the, the artwork on my nails, and an attendee came up and was looking at um, looking at the designs on my nails, and was like, oh, how did you do that? So we started to describe it to her, and then I picked up a business card I, of Holly's and asked this gal, I said, well, are you on Facebook? She said, yes, so I handed her the business card. I said, well, the, the video to tutorial to how to do this particular look is on this Facebook page, <laughs> and this woman takes the card, no joke, went, Oh my God, you're the fingernail fixer. I thought she was going to cry. She was like having this fangirl moment. And I looked at Holly and Holly's like, um, I'm not ever sure what to do when this happens. And I just looked at him like, don't expect me to do that. Right. But the next time she walked in my door at my house, I was like, is that the fingernail fixer? <laughs> <laughs> at least you've always been able to claim my sleep on your couch. <laughs> yes, yes, she sleeps on my couch. So it's been very inspiring to me to watch what she has built. But I have told her for years, I always felt like anything I tried to do now, she's already done. Um, so I didn't want to get into doing how-to videos and step-by-steps. Um, I felt like for years I've kind of been her silent partner, the other half of her nail soul, as she calls me. But it's just been within the last six to seven months that I've really started stepping my toe into this. And it's been so much more fun for me to do this jointly. Yes. I didn't have an interest in having a voice on my own necessarily it's much more fun to do this as partners as BFFs yes for sure and it's it's Lauren would you agree it's like the utmost form of flattery when someone attempts to do the things you've done oh so much <laughs> I, I mean it it's just it, it's such a like tickly warm fuzzy feeling mm -hmm. um it's a lot of work yes you have to record the thing you have to re-record it when it doesn't go right you have to take the time to then edit the video uh you have to do graphics you have to do voiceover um i mean there is a lot that goes into it i put out a video and i might get five people who comment on youtube mm -hmm. um and i know that it gets a lot of views but for those five people that take the time to comment um it really means a lot. And I know I don't always get the time to comment back. I try to. Mm -hmm. um, I have it coming from like every avenue. Uh, so it's it's hard, but I do try. I make time every day to do as much as I can. But when you see somebody actually go a step further than that and try to attempt to do that nail themselves, that's why I do what I do. That's why I do the tutorials. I'm sure that's part of why you do what you do when you make those tutorials. I want people to take that step and do it and implement it and, um, you know, own it and make it theirs. And, yes. and that's what I love. That's what I love. One yes. of my favorite things about being an educator is teaching nail art classes and showing some very simple designs, some very easy salon nail art that can be done quickly at your table and having nail professionals and attendees be like, that's it? 
I'm like, yep, that's, that's it. it. That's dots all it and does. lines. Yep. A lot of things come I'm, down to dots and lines. Yep, I love seeing that um, those inspirations. That's what I've said for years. If I can make it in lines and dots, it'll happen. Yeah. And just even the nail professionals that have picked up making tutorial videos, having blogs, doing more social media, that's why we do what you do. Not so you can feel like you're copying, but so that you can feel empowered to yes. do it in your own style, to put your own spin on it. Even if you were to try and repeat my tutorial word for word, the way that you present it with your personality Someone else may learn better from you than they learned from me, even though in your mind it's the exact same thing. Well, we spoke to um, uh, Beth from Nails Magazine, and mm -hmm. I spoke to Diane Diaz in Chicago, and she mentioned about wanting to start doing some tutorials in Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's like, well, that's a fabulous idea because you've got a whole other niche of people yeah. that you can reach. And again, you might be saying the exact same thing that Holly does, but explaining in a different way. We put our... We put our art and information out there to inspire others, not to be like, oh, this is how fabulous I am. <laughs> right. that, is, that is not my game. <laughs> and to follow up on Lauren, where she said it's a lot of work with the editing and the graphics, and if you mess it up, you refilm it. So just like a little reminder for those of you that weren't around or that it's been a while since you watched one of my tutorials, they're not edited, they're not refilmed. It is literally the raw mistakes and all, take it as it is, fingernail fixer, turtle tutorial. Yep. <laughs> and just to kind of wrap up social media, the Manicam made a de debut in the 2012 Emmy Awards. And that was a really neat opportunity to see some of the things that celebrities were doing. And society tends to want what other people have. So once they started seeing those elaborate, really decorated manicures, it gave us more opportunities to start offering those elaborate, more decorated manicures. And the trick with nail art has always been and probably will always be because we're a little bit self-depreciating as nail professionals, charging for your time. Your time has value, period. No excuses, no exceptions, no anything your time has value. So you definitely need to be charging for those nail art services that you're doing. I like what Jennifer says here. She says, I love doing real time, mistakes and all. It shows you're real. Exactly. It shows that we're all human. You cannot duplicate the same design on all 10 fingers. Even if you're stamping, they still don't turn out all exactly the same. You've got 10 little pieces of art every time you do it. Yes. And my favorite analogy is to always look at something like Bob Ross. For those of you that aren't old enough to have a clue who that is, use your friend Google. And Bob Ross, when they would zoom in on his painting tutorials, the canvas looked awful. It's like these blobs of nothing. Or just Scrapes like, and what? Like this. Yeah. And then when they zoom out, it's this stunning photo. Happy trees. Yes. So happy, happy trees. trees. And what this makes me think of is we're sometimes so focused on that laser precision of the, our tiny canvases that we forget to sit back and look at the entire picture as a beautiful work of art that came from our heart as a gift to the happiness of our clients. I love it. Absolutely love it when I can make a grown woman go, oh, yes, <laughs> like a little girl. <laughs> yes. And they always leave smiling. Yes. And sometimes hugs. Yeah, that's fabulous. I love when they're yes. so excited about their nails that you get a yes. hug. Like, that's the best tip ever. Yes. For sure. Well, it looks like we have gone just a little bit past <laughs> our usual hour because this topic is so much fun. And we have our idea for July, and we'd love to know your comments on what you think of the topic or what things you would like help with on the topic. Do you want to share it with them? Uh, we thought we'd talk about social media. In the in the prog uh, progress of researching this and getting like the dates there for Facebook being around since 2004 and Instagram being around since 2010, it got me to thinking maybe not everybody is real familiar with all platforms of social media. And um, I have some information that I'm hoping I'm going to get permission to share on exactly like what graphic or demographics, mm -hmm. like who is your main people that use Facebook? What age groups? Who is the people that use Instagram? Where do these people get their information? Uh, one of the comments that was made 
um, when we were at our, our summit was your social media attention span is two seconds. You have to get somebody's interest in two seconds if you want them to then go back and look at your mm -hmm. further into your information. So we'd like to delve a little bit more into how can help you on your social media. What platforms should be you be using? Which ones are going to draw clients? Which ones are you using to network with other professionals? What are your social media goals? Is your goal to be well known by nail professionals, well known by customers, to only be known in your area? What are you looking to accomplish? We'll also have some tips and tricks on social media itself, some information on posting and all of that fun stuff that I normally do in classes. Mm -hmm. And so it'll kind of be like a complimentary class from Nails Magazine. And we'll help you learn about all about hashtags in case you don't really know what that true, there is a science to hashtags. It's actually kind of interesting. It's very interesting. And for those of you that didn't catch it last time, our official hashtag for our monthly Facebook Live togetherness is hashtag, hashtag nail on. Nail on. So we We're hope that you'll start using that and have fun with it. Since we have agreed, I have agreed to we agreed to take this on for the rest of the year. We decided our show needed a name, so we are now officially going to be calling ourselves Nail On with Holly and Mel. Absolutely. So, Nail On Mel. Nail On Holly. Perfect. Hopefully to see, we'll see you guys next time. And Remember to check out the blog for the continuing dates for the rest of the year, as well as information on the bonus blog for the Foot Forward Summit. Throw up some hearts for our special guest, Lauren Wireman. Let Woo! us know if you liked having a special guest. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks so much Nail for on. taking. That's right. Nail <laughs> on. We love you. Thanks for taking time out of your awesome travel schedule. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us.